From the Watergate Building in Washington, this is Hotline TV. Now, here's Hotline Editor, John Mercurio. Bienvenidos a Hotline Televisión. Yo me llamo John Mercurio. Y me llamo Maura O'Brien. Rudy Giuliani, thanks for joining us, uh, Maura. <laughs> Thank you. Rudy Giuliani broke with the GOP field in the party's first debate last night, saying it would be all right, actually okay, if the Supreme Court repealed Roe v. Wade. Maura O'Brien, our resident Giuliani expert, what do you think of his performance? Well, I mean, it was an interesting moment because um, that is, I mean, that's definitely the moment that everybody's talking about today. When Chris Matthews went down the line <laughs> and, and asked everybody, you know, what kind of day that would be. And every, you know, everybody else, they, you know, the viewers had a chance to see everybody else right. say what a great day it would be. Then Rudy Giuliani, oh, you know, it'd be okay. And then adding, or it'd also be okay if, you know, some strict constructionist ruled it as a precedent. Right. Here's my personal opinion. That was the worst possible answer he could have given. Either he's, a, he's, either he's going to stick with his, his, his record of being in support of abortion rights, right. or he's going to start try to finagle his way into the, the anti-abortion community. But right. by saying it's okay, you're, you're pissing off the pro-choice uh, supporters that you've had. Right. And you're not really winning many anti-abortion uh, supporters either because you sound so completely lukewarm totally. on the issue. And this is exactly what we were talking about last time I was on about how it was this issue. He sounded like he couldn't have cared less. Like right. that, oh, whatever, you know, I, I just go about my business, no right. big deal. He also, I thought, sort of uh, finagled and sort of lost on the que the other question, which is about federal funding. He talked right. about how it was a state issue, right. which, is, which is exactly what I think we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Leaving it to the states is the equivalent of saying, I don't want to answer that question because totally. it's too explosive. It was a state, it, federal financing should be a state issue. Chris Matthews followed up with, well, when you were in, in, the, in the city of New York, did you support mm -hmm. it? I supported it then, but it's a state issue. Plus, and it's getting, with all these answers about, it, it seemed like, he, you know, Chris Matthews think called it his nuanced position on abortion. Every time he answers this question, it seems to just, get, for just the average person watching, it's getting really hard to keep track of what exactly, you know, is his position. It seems like, I mean, right. not that it's changing or, I mean, but it's just, it's hard to follow. And, and he has had so long to prepare for this. Right. If, if there's one issue on which you think Giuliani is going to be prepared to this debate in a, in, a, in a presidential primary like this, it's going to be abortion rights. Right. This should be it. And yet it was a, it was a, it was a bizarre sort of fumble. It was. And it kind of, it definitely overshadowed anything else he said. I mean, because the rest of the debate, I mean, he didn't stand out. But he, you know, he appeared confident. He mm -hmm. was, you know, he gave, he was able to, you know, cite his experience in New York very well. He sounded good on, you know, national security. On he answered that Sunni Shia, you know, question correctly. Right. Well, and right. Technic it was a textbook correct. Right. But I mean, it was. But all of that. You know, who cares? Right. I mean, no one even noticed it. You know, you mentioned the fact that he talked about his experience in New York, and that struck me as an interesting strategy on his part. Um, there were several questions in which he had the opportunity to either talk about how he led New York post 9 11 mm -hmm. or how he had led New York during the, the first, basically, the first seven years and nine months of his, of right. his mayoral uh, uh, term. And he chose to focus on the, the, the seven years and, and nine months, which I think mm -hmm. was smart because I, I think, think so too. the rest of America knows him as sort of America's mayor, the post 9 11 right. New York City mayor, which he really wasn't. I mean, if you talk to the Bloomberg and the Pataki people, they say, We brought New York City exactly. back. Exactly. Rudy Giuliani. And left New York and went to raise money around the country off of 9-11. Right, and he already has that image. He doesn't need to do anything else to, you know, further promote it for the average voter. Right. But, you know, it does, I, do, I do think it does him a lot of good to talk about, you know, the welfare, you know, crime reductions, you know, all those things that happened beforehand that, you know, a lot of people maybe don't know about. He dabbled in a, particular, in, in a, in a partic particularly uh, controversial strategy. Uh, when a lot of people, a lot of his critics talk about his treatment of African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, his relationship with African Americans in the city, um, he likes to respond by saying, I lowered crime, right. um, and most of the crime took place, and his, the inference being that most of the crime took place uh, in neighborhoods with minorities. Right. But a lot of minorities say, look, there's a large African American population outside of high crime areas, outside of low income areas, and those are, and you, the assumption that you make by, by going from relationships with African Americans to, to the issue of crime, uh, can yeah. sometimes be viewed as, 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 as sort of racist. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't think he necessarily scored 100% last night. What yeah. would you give him, a grade? Um, I would give him, I would say, a B minus. So, I mean, it was, it was nothing, you know, really detrimental. But 
you know, he'll probably stay and, you know, he'll, he's not really moving around anywhere. Mm -hmm, but he didn't but solidify. He didn't stand his... out. He didn't solidify. He kind of, but he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. All right. Well, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for joining us, Thank Mara you. My pleasure. And happy Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo to you, too. All right. We're devoting this entire show to the Republican presidential debate on Thursday night in Simi Valley. Next up, Senator John McCain. McCain, looking at Nancy Reagan in the audience last night, said he would support the use of federal funding for stem cell research. Joining us to talk about Senator McCain, Mike Mamoli. Welcome to me. Welcome to you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Mike, how do you think this and his other positions uh, played out last night for, for Senator McCain? You know, I don't even remember the stem cell research answer. The only thing that I think I'm gonna, anyone's going to remember from John McCain last night right. was, was this moment, and he looked at the camera and was talking about Osama bin Laden and said, I will follow him to the gates of hell. <laughs> and I just played the Chris Matthews who did like that really nervous right. giggle after the whole thing was over. Right. right. I mean, obviously you have to be as tough as possible. And he was taking a little shot at Romney who said, you know, uh, we don't need to devote all of our resources to, to, to following him. Now, I don't know what McCain is saying either. He's going to hell already and he's just going to follow him. Yeah, you got this sort of image there. of McCain and Obama, Osama bin Laden standing at the gates of hell, which is... <laughs> Or, or he's just showing, showing he's that tough that he's going to follow him there. Yeah. But the, the, the most awkward part of that was the smile at the, the awkward. end. It, it was like you could hear some advisor standing there saying, look, when you're on television, you often look very dour. You need to smile as much as, much as possible. But it was an awkward time right. to remember um, that he wanted, that he needed there's to a, there's be. There's a time for smiling. There's a time for not. And talking about following a terrorist to the gates of hell, you can do without the smile at right. that point. Did he do enough, though? Did he do as much as he needed to do, do you think, to sort of turn this thing around. He's already sort of back up in the polls in some early primary states, mm -hmm. uh, especially in New Hampshire. Um, but do you think he did enough to, to sort of minimize the Giuliani and the Romney gains? Well, usually covering Democrats, I was able to watch the debate kind of with an open you know, mind. And I think Rudy Giuliani probably was more of this, this, you know, the focus of the debate because of his abortion answers, things like that. McCain did a very good job of kind of you know, doing, being John McCain, McCain being McCain, without really doing anything to kind of trip himself up. You know, he, the, the closest he maybe came was on um, the, the answer about evolution, where he said he you know, agrees with evolution, uh, he believes in evolution, possibly offending conservatives, but then he realized quickly, you know, um, but, you know, I look at the Grand Canyon and I see the hand of God. So right. I think he did a very good job of being tough John McCain. Somebody called him Popeye, you know. No one's perceptions of McCain probably changed after last night. He's still the same, you know, old cranky guy or the same <laughs> strong maverick that everyone likes or dislikes. Who will follow Osama to the gates of hell. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for joining us, Mike Mamoli. Thank you, John. All right, joining us to talk about Mitt Romney's performance last night is our Romney aficionado, Shira Tuplitz. Thank you so much for joining uh, us. Thank you for having me, John. All right, so what about Mitt Romney's, if anything, uh, wait, what about Mitt Romney's performance, if anything, hmm. surprised you last night? Well, not that much surprised me, actually. He's a very concrete style when he goes into these things. It was very similar to his speaking style at a lot of events I've seen him do. Um, he came across as quite confident and comfortable, though. Everyone else on the stage, you could maybe see a little bit of nerves. I didn't see one ounce of nerve in him. It but was really But did he incredible. look a little bit like the teacher's pet? I mean, polishing his apples. I mean, he looked so perfectly prepared. He just, at some point, he fights that, you know, his hair was perfect. His tan was right. perfect. His tone was perfect. He sounded like he could be doing car commercials, I heard somebody <laughs> say. Um, or, the, you know, doing the, the, uh, the, the back, the, the voiceover for a car commercial. Um, he was the first one off the stage to go shake uh, Nancy Reagan's I, hand. Yeah, I saw that. Um, which struck me as a, a slightly... See the reporter right behind him? Yeah. Stuck me, stuck me, stuck, struck me, thank you very much, mm -hmm. as I stayed up very late watching the debate coverage last night. Struck me as uh, slightly obsequious. Um, does that sort of thing, I mean, does the overly preparedness thing, something he has to, has to fight for, well, fight against? Um, I don't think at this point, no, because he has a lot to prove about himself still. Uh, a lot of Americans really don't know a lot about him, so I think they're okay with seeing a competent man who's not afraid to use four-syllable words, mm -hmm. as he did last night. Uh, a lot of people are referring to him as presidential. That's been sort of the buzzword his campaign wants to put out. Um, I think another word is certainly practiced. I mean, in this stem cell abortion answer, he pretty much almost said verbatim the second answer again when Chris Matthews or John Harris, when one of the moderators pushed him. I thought that was very interesting. Almost the same exact answer over again. Well, Harris, I think, was really focused. John Harris from Politico was really focused on Romney. I mean, the two questions that he asked him specifically were both 
uh, you know, sort of negative, sort of, you know, hard-hitting about abortion rights and about, the, I think he also asked him the stem cell question, um, in a way that was very, very aggressive. How do you think he handled the stem cell question? Um, the question of whether or not he supports federal funding for stem cell research. You know, he answered it the only way he can, really, which is to say what he's been saying. And when you're accused of flip-flopping, you just have to stay on message with, you know, what he calls a change of mind, what some might call a flip-flop. And he just stayed on message the whole time. He answered the only way he really could, and that was the story he's been telling for the past two years. Right, two years. <laughs> two years as opposed to uh, Three years you know, maybe now. a decade yeah. or more than that. Uh, Terry Shiva was another sort of flashpoint, I thought, mm -hmm. for, uh, for Romney, because he was the first... Uh, candidate yeah. to answer that question, and it sort of went from there. Uh, and, and, and his answer was very hard hitting, I thought. And then you saw the rest of the field sort of, you know, I think step back from where Romney was, putting him out there, I think, farther right. to the right uh, than a lot of the other candidates in a way that I think if he had maybe been uh, asked to answer it later, he, uh, he might have had a, a slightly more nuanced answer. He might have, but actually what you're saying about his position being on the far left of the stage definitely worked as advantage because the moderators didn't cut him off as much as he cut the guts off later down the line. Which was, I think, a flaw in the format in that yeah, they constantly they didn't went go to the beginning. Forth, yeah. They constantly started with him. So he they got never, longer answers every time, yeah. Yeah, we could spend a whole... Uh, but his advisors were like, yes! We could spend a left. whole show talking about the format, yeah. but I'm afraid that will have to do it for oh, today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having Shira, me. and happy Cinco de Mayo. Thank you. Thank you, John. Happy Cinco de Mayo to you, too. Oh, my hat's going to fall off. <laughs> and now for the fastest two minutes in politics with Catherine Lear. Catherine, so much, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, John. Catherine, President Bush coined a new nickname for himself this week, the Commander Guy. Isn't that Russell Crowe? No, that's Master and Commander, or my favorite, Cinderella Man. Nice. John, New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg fielded questions from Mexican reporters this week and, to everyone's surprise, responded in Spanish. How many dineros did it cost him to learn that? I don't know. I think he's taking the same Spanish course as Newt Gingrich though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Marion Barry introduced legislation this week that would create tolls in the District of Columbia. Catherine, does this guy not get stopped enough? No, he doesn't. If you ask me, he should be stopped permanently. Ouch. Ouch. Not a Barry fan. And finally, John, the McGreevy weirdos just keep getting weirder. While his ex-wife was sitting on Oprah's couch, the former governor announced that he is joining the priesthood. Is this another book deal in the making? Yeah, and it's going to be called, Are You There, God? It's me, McGreevy. <laughs> And we're out of time for today. Thanks for joining us on The Big Show. We'll see you on Monday. And finally, one last time, happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody.